Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Buffy, where I'll be talking about and reviewing all the episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in order. Today, I'm looking at Season 5, Episode 3, The Replacement. We begin the episode in Xander's basement with Anya still injured from her run-in with Harmony's gang. Xander's parents get home and start fighting, so he decides he needs to move out. Suddenly, there's this guy with glowy teeth who asks for the death of the Slayer, and into the credits we go. Xander goes to view an apartment, but the estate agent is judgy, Xander thinks it's out of his price range, and Anya pitches a fit that she can't have it, and storms off. At the magic box, Toth jump scares Giles so he hits him with a fertility statue, but he whooshes out because Buffy's not home. Giles tells the others about the encounter. Well, I'm not dead or unconscious, so I say bravo for me. And he finds Toth in a book, who will be very focused on pursuing Buffy. Where do we find him and how hard can I kill him? Giles says there was a distinct smell to him, so they go to the dump and find Spike to ask about Toth. But no need, he's right behind them, and he zaps Xander with a stick when he protects Buffy. Toth just pieces out and Xander leaves behind another Xander, who wakes up in the trash. Great! Now there's two of those ugly shirts. He goes home but can't get in and finds his duplicate, so he calls Buffy as the other one walks by. Let's hold it there as there's no special camera trick or split screen used. Xander's double is played by Nicholas Brendan's in real life twin brother Kelly, who will provide a body double throughout, while Nicholas Brendan does all the speaking lines until the end. He chooses to hang up and follow his twin, so Buffy reassures Riley, wearing an ugly ass outfit, Dawn annoys everyone from the hall, and Joyce complains of a headache. Uh oh. Spike constructs a mannequin to resemble Buffy and kicks its head off, while Xander clone gets called into the boss's office and he gets promoted while he plays with a shiny disc. And later he charms the estate agent and gets cleared for the apartment. He calls Anya and invites her over, so Xander jumps him and gets punched, and rushes to Giles's, where Xander clone is already there, and Xander is upset that Buffy falls for it. Willow gets home to find Xander, who babbles at her, tells her things only they would know, and does the Snoopy dance, as told to us in passion. Willow is confused by his behaviour, so Xander explains about his clone, who wants to kill Xander, and Buffy blames Toth. It must be Toth. It's a robot! It's an evil robot constructed from evil parts that look like me designed to do evil. Uh-huh. Or it's Toth. Or it's Toth. Clone Xander wants to go meet Anya, while regular Xander complains that Clone Xander is doing better with his life than he is, and admits to Willow that maybe people are better off with the replacement, but realises that Anya is worth fighting for. Anya's not home, she's at the apartment being sweet-talked by Clone Xander, but she wants to race ahead with everything in life because she's freaking out about her own mortality, so Xander comforts her. Xander bursts in, but Anya sides with the clone, while Willow goes to Buffy to make a case for the real Xander, saying he proved his identity, but Giles reveals they're both Xander, just one has Xander's confidence and one his goofiness, which Toth was trying to do to Buffy to make a weak version to kill her more easily. Kill the weaker Buffy half, and the Slayer half dies. Xander begs Anya to trust him, but when she doesn't, he pulls out a gun, which they all fight over, and on their way, Buffy asks Riley if he wished she had been split to have a normal life, but Riley says no. There's no part of you I'm not in love with. Clone Xander gets the gun as Buffy arrives, and he hands it over, and she kicks both their butts. And here is where Kelly Donovan fully takes over as one of the Xanders. He's the one in the blue shirt. Xander calls the other out for his shiny disc hypnosis, which turns out to be a flattened coin. But here comes Toth, who Riley tackles, then Buffy stabs. Oh yeah, that cleaned the boss is gone. I was thinking the same thing. Anya wants a threesome. Uh, uh, we just uh, need to arrange the candles. Also, we should continue to pretend we heard none of the disturbing sex talk. And Xander bonds with himself before he's put back together and Riley helps him move out. Xander now becomes more assertive and Riley admits to him that despite being ridiculously in love with Buffy, she doesn't feel the same way. Well, that's sad. All right, this is a good one, and even though I'm not the biggest Xander fan, it's a good look into his character and how he will be perceived going forward. Goofy Xander is the Xander we know, whereas confident Xander we'll see more of as the show progresses. But he's always been there. He's always been brave and protected those around him. 
I sort of get, but also don't really get Tot's plan. He knows he can't kill Buffy as is, but surely splitting her would put him in the path of a very pissed off super slayer, and he'd have to get past her in order to get to the weak one. So he would have been better off getting some buddies together and attacking her all in one go. In fact, with all the monsters, demons and vampires in Sunnydale, I'm amazed they don't all rush Buffy at once and finish her off, especially seeing as demons don't need an invite to get into her house. There's quite a bit of foreshadowing here. First off, Riley admits to Xander that Buffy doesn't love him, which spells the beginning of the end of their relationship this season. Joyce complains of a headache, which alludes to her health problems and ultimate demise. And finally, Xander being split in two and killing one kills them both is how the group will ultimately defeat the big bad of the season, as she shares a body with someone who her fate is tied to. I think Nicholas Brendan does a great job with the dual roles, helped out by his real-life twin brother, and I like we get a callback to Willow's twin in Doppelgangland, and also Riley mentions Buffy's love of ice skating movies, which references What's My Line, and also Michelle Trachtenberg, who plays Dawn, would go on to star in such a movie called Ice Princess. We have a single death, one demon, Toth, who got stabbed by Buffy, bringing our running total to two humans, six vampires, and one demon. So there you have it. That was The Replacement. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, or come say hi on social m What the fuck?! You know what? I'm gonna leave that in. I am house-sitting and my friends just looked up, and her cat had dumped a dead mouse in my suitcase. Thanks, Simba! Anyway, come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button, it really does mean a lot, or consider subscribing if you want to be sired by my channel. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching, I'll speak to you soon, and don't let the vampires bite.